Good morning, Victorious Ones. How are you guys doing? I hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm just going to wait for everybody to come on so that we can have a conversation about overcoming all obstacles. Amen. You have to be able to stand courageously in the midst of everything that you're facing and just be, be, be determined to win. Amen. And so I'm just sitting here thinking about different people that we've read about in the Bible and how they had to overcome, you know, everybody that we read about in the Bible, they had to overcome. Good morning, Destiny. And so this morning I just woke up and I told myself I am going to stand in the midst of, you know, all that I'm going through. I'm going to stand courageously. Why? Because I win. The Bible says that I am more than a conqueror. Amen. I'm more than a conqueror. And so I'm just encouraging myself. Amen. And so um, let me um, make an announcement. Next week we're having our next prophetic prayer rally. It's going to be teaching and praying. Prophetic, understanding prophetic teaching and pray, praying. So if anybody wants to join us, you'll register at the link that I'll post for you. That's going to be next week. Good morning, Salisha. Yes, so the, the next um, prophetic prayer rally is going to be next week, Monday, okay? So those of you who are looking forward to the next one, that's when it will be. So I was reading um, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, Mind, so it's called The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, and it the, the um, second part of the, the title is Mastering the Inner Game of of wealth so it's the secrets of the millionaire mind mastering the inner game of wealth and so I've been reading this book and just chunking it you know really understanding and before I even go any further in this broadcast we're gonna cover ourselves in prayer because we know that you could be talking and re releasing profound revelation okay a rhema word and it will go over people's heads because of the prince of the power of the air but I woke up this morning to walk fully in the authority that Christ has given me and I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus I cover my family with the blood of Jesus father we ask for divine intervention before I even go any further, I ask for your angels, oh God, your warrior angels, your ministering angels to be released, Father, to, to be encamped around us, oh God, to help us. Father, I cover my mind right now. I cover the mind of my children. I cover the mind of my spouse. I cover the mind of the people who are listening to me. Father, we cover our minds with the blood of Jesus. Father, we cover our heads with the helmet of salvation. We ask, oh God, that you will give us clarity wisdom knowledge and understanding help us oh god to understand father release the spirit of understanding upon us father release wisdom upon us and within us oh god father release a rhema word a rhema word to us oh god in the name of jesus father god open up our ears so that we can hear truth father god open up our eyes so that we can see you this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, you said the steps of a good man are ordered by you. So you have ordained for us to be here at this particular moment, oh God, because you have something to say to us. And Father, like Samuel, we, we, we say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so we anoint our ears. And our eyes, Father God, touch my mouth. Father God, may the, may the words of my mouth, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Father, I decrease so that you can increase in me today, Father. In the name of Jesus, this is uh, May 7th. We ask for grace, number five, 
and we ask for number seven, Father, the completion and perfection of our day and our blessings, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you will perfect all things concerning us. I decree and I declare. Father God, I decree and I declare in the courts of heaven that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we condemn those curse words. And Father, I release the blessings of Abraham upon us. Father, you said your, your, your plan is to prosper us, oh God, and not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. Father, you said your blessings make us rich and you add no sorrow to the blessings. And so I release the blessings upon us today. Father God, give us this day of a daily bread. Father God, please forgive us of all of our sins. Wash us with the redeeming, atoning blood of Yeshua, your son, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. We come to repossess our possessions. Many of us have been robbed. The enemy has stolen from you. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you will have life and have life more abundantly. And so today, we're coming to take back our blessings. And we're doing it by force because we understand that the kingdom of God suffer with violence and the violent ones, we're taking it by force. And so God says his plan is to prosper us. And so wealth is our birthright. Wealth is our portion. And so we come to claim it in the name of Jesus. But you got to renew your mind because the poverty mentality tell you don't do it. But today, the Facey family and everybody who, who is in agreement with me, the Bible says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, God said, touching and agreeing, he said, I'm there with you, and I will give you what you're asking for. And so, Father God, we ask for the wealth transfer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The Holy Spirit says he is reestablishing you. He is reestablishing you. What does the word reestablish mean? I'm glad you asked. We're going to flow in the prophetic. God didn't give me a gift for me to sit on it. The word establish. Let's look it up really quickly. He gave me this on Sunday when I was studying 2, 2 Kings 24 and 25. Let's give you the definition for the word establish. God is reestablishing my family and your family in the name of Jesus. And so we understand that we can't get the wealth without God. And so we're not going to pretend. <laughs> Some people can do it without God. I can't do it. That's why Moses said, if you don't go before us, we ain't going. He, Moses said, if you don't go ahead of us, we're not going. And so... This is, this is, this is going to be the order. God is in the front and we are following behind. Amen. And so we understand. I don't want nothing unless God is in it. <laughs> Amen. That's my posture. I'm like, Father God, you said, seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And all that I need will be added unto me. Now you can share the broadcast. Thank you very much. Establish. I want to give you this word before I go on. It means having been in existence for a long time and therefore recognized and generally accepted. Where you were rejected, Joseph? <laughs> Where you were rejected, God said, I'm reestablishing you. In the name of Jesus. Isaac said, we have four viewers, and I keep seeing the number four. Yes, four is direction, seasons. The season is changing. It's also direction. So your blessings are coming to you from the north, south, east, and west. And God is changing your season in the name of Jesus. Amen? And so where you were stuck in winter, God is like, watch. I'm giving you high velocity. I'm speeding you up into your spring and into your summer. You shall bear much fruit because I promise that you're going to be fruitful. You're going to multiply. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Establish. It says accepted. It says confirmed. Set. Fixed. Official. Settled. 
settled, normal. I knew normal, honey, is wealth upon wealth to infinity. In the name of Jesus, God is establishing us. Re Some of us have been in the wrong places. Okay? And God says, I'm elevating you. And it's going to be at a, it's going to be quickly. It's going to be at a high velocity. Okay? So get ready. It's going to be at superluminal speed. That's why you must pray attention and stay focused because God is doing a quick work, but the enemy is going to try to keep up and try to block you and distract you. So you got to be planted and rooted in the word of God. Amen? And so established means settled. It says, Prevailing. What does prevailing mean? That's a good word. Prevail, it says, um, having most appeal or affluence. Okay? You have you have influence and you have you, it's it's you have power. Prevail, that's a powerful word. It says current. God is making it current. You've been stuck, stuck in the past. He said, forget the past. You're prevailing. It means current. We shall possess our possession. Prevailing means I'm um, having most influence. Come on, Joseph. To be second in command in Egypt, that sounds like prevailing to me. Come on, Job, who was, I mean, Job went through hell. Lost all 10 of his kids, I believe, in one day. And, 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 and his friends were accusing him of doing things that he didn't even do. Right? But Job prevailed. I think the scripture says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, right? Satan cannot prevail against you because the king of kings, his spirit lives, in, lives on the inside of you and me. And so we have the victory. That's why he said we are more than conquerors and the righteous are as bold as a lion. And so God is doing a, a beautiful thing for us. And so we prophesy it because death and life are in the power of our tongue. Prevail. It also means prove more powerful than opposing forces. It means to be victorious. My God. It means to be victorious. This is all from the word establish. It also means to triumph. On Saturday, I passed by a church. It says triumph. Sunday morning, I woke up outside of our house. I got the picture to prove it. There was a moving truck across the street that says triumph. The Holy Spirit is clearly saying that we are victorious. <laughs> we are more than conquerors. Bold as a lion. We are, we are triumphant in all areas, including the wealth, you know, the areas of finances. When you prevail, it says you win. Oh my God, you win out. You win through. You triumph. Uh, it says to be victorious, to be the victor, to gain the victory. To carry all before one. It says to finish first. To succeed. To come out on top. To prove superior. To conquer. To overcome. To take the crown. <laughs> to gain the palm. I saw the word Lena. Lena. Uh, Lena. Whatever. L-E-A-N. L-E-N-A. Excuse me. L-E-N-A. And it means palm. This was yesterday. And look at it. It says right here. Prevail means to gain the palm. Didn't they lay palm branches for Jesus? It means to rule. It means reign. Oh my God. This is beautiful. It says predominant. To, pre to, to, pre to persist. To endure. To survive. This is our word of the day. Prevail. Amen. It also means. What else? The root word. I mean the Latin word. It says to have greater power. To have greater power. Christ says, I've given you a power and authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Now let's go back to the word establish. God is a, God said he's, he's reestablishing us. It's, it, it means to be current, right? It's, it's, um, it means to be fixed. It says habitual. Being wealthy is going to be our habit. It's going to be our habit. It's going to be customary, okay? It says... Um, to be well known when you're established, you're well known. He said, "Listen, didn't he say your name is gonna be great, and, and your gift is gonna make room for you and bring you before great people? Get ready, God is reestablishing you. The enemy tried to destroy you, 
Okay, when, when something is, is established, it is familiar. People going to know the God that you serve. Okay, going to bless you real good, Joseph. It means acknowledge. It means respectable. It means renowned and prominent. Oh, my God. Now, let's go to the book, The Millionaire, The Secret of the Millionaire Mind. He said in the book, do not complain. He said, when you complain, it's like cutting your throat. It's killing your blessing, so don't do it. And I did a video on that. Then he said, because many of us have the wrong idea about money and we reject money, money runs, is going to run away from you. So you got to check your mind when it comes to money and wealth. If you're going to a job and that's it, and you think that's good enough and you don't have a business, you have the wrong idea. Your mind needs to be renewed. And so we all know by now that the, the employee, their tax more than the business owner. So what you want to do, wisdom, is to have your job and use your job to fund your business so that when it comes to tax time, you can have tax write-off, get a tax break because of your business. Okay, so that's common knowledge. You can Google that and find it. That's why you, the wealthy don't have a job. When was the last time you saw the, the rich talk about, I got to go to job, buy job? No. That's, that's, that's what they taught us to do. They told us to go to college and get a job so that we could work for them and be their slave. The devil is a liar. I am the head, not the tail, above only, never beneath. When God opened your eyes, open your eyes. That, to me, it's foolishness that God opened your eyes to show you that there's poop right there and you go step in it on purpose. That is such, that's ignorance. That's idiotic, okay? God has opened up our eyes so that we can know how to walk around stuff, so that we can jump over the mess, so we can mount up on wings as eagles. Your eyes are open. The world, everybody's telling you, I mean, there's like thousands of people telling you that you can get a carrot bars account for free, that you can get cryptocurrency for free, you can get gold for free, you can get a business account under your personal account for free, and you saying no and going to a job, that, that shows that you're ignorant. And so what you need to do is to pray, ask God to take away the scales from your eyes so that you can see why would I not want to save gold? Physical gold. That's mailed to my house. Why wouldn't I want to do that? Why wouldn't I want to build a team where we're all getting paid, we're all getting blessed together because we're, we're going to use leverage? Why wouldn't, why, wouldn't I, why would I reject that? Why would I choose to go to a job where it's singular? Is you putting your time in as a slave to somebody else? And get one little paycheck. When you could be in networking and you get a group of people and you have the CEO of Carabars, Mr. Harold Seitz, he said, you build your team, I'm going to bless all of you. So it goes like this. This is only one way that we get paid. We get paid like a, a whole bunch of different ways. So I think it's the loyalty bonus. Don't quote me. I don't know the name, but I know what it does. So I bring destiny into the business. We both save gold consistently one gram a month and I believe it's after a year she get free gold and I get free gold because we're both doing it so I get paid for saving gold right by getting paid in gold which is real money God's money and then she gets paid too in gold and the more people you have doing this the more gold we're all gonna have why would I say no to that you understand that tells me when you say no you're blind and you're deaf. And so you just got to simply pray over your ears, pray over your eyes. Okay? Let's keep on going. So in this book, he said, if you have the wrong idea about money, money's always going to evade you, it's going to escape you. And so he said, check your mind. Renew your mind, which is biblical, Romans 12. And he said, sometimes in your, in your subconscious mind, you um, don't think you are worthy of being wealthy. And your, your mind is negative and so the reason why we don't have our blessings is because we're actually rejecting our blessings without even knowing it and that's scary to me that money could run away from you because we have the wrong idea about money okay so he said you can't think negative you gotta think positive the other thing he said he said if you want to be rich 
um, you can't just want it. Everybody say they want to be rich. He said, that's not going to bring wealth to you. And then he said, some people, they choose to be rich. And even in saying that, he said, that's still not good enough. I mean, it's better than just saying I want it. So the next level above that is I choose to be wealthy and that's still not enough. This is what he said you have to do. He said, you have to, um, you have to be committed to being wealthy. Please write that down. I am committed to being wealthy. I am committed. And I, let, let's look at the word committed. Let's see if we can break that word down. So I am committed to being wealthy. Let's look at the word. Um, let's look at the word and see what that means. When you are committed, let's break this word down. It says feeling dedicated and loyalty to a cause, activity, or a job wholeheartedly and dedicated. Okay? So that means you are loyal, you are dedicated, okay? You are devoted to it. That means you're not going to give up. So you have to be committed. So you got to write that down. I am committed, okay, to being wealthy. So let's, 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 let's find another definition. So it says... When you are committed, you have a pledge or a commitment to someone or to something, okay? It says, let's see if we can find commitment. Let's look up commitment. So commitment means dedication, devotion, loyalty, faithfulness. Okay, responsibility. It says an engagement or obligation. Okay, when you're committed, okay, and you're responsible, you have responsibility, you have a duty, okay, you have an obligation, you, you feel liable, there's a burden, okay, um, and, and he says there's a task and there's undertaking. So when I was reading this, he said you have to be committed to being wealthy. He said you have to give it 100%. So for those of us who get into carry bars, I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to tell you the truth now. This, this is going to be truth.com. Okay? So you have some people, they come into carry bars, and they want money, and they stop right there. Then you have some people, they say, you know what? I've been watching them these, I've been watching the lives, and, and I'm, I'm on the power call. I choose to be wealthy. And they think that's a, that's a great thing, right? They think that's the biggest thing. I choose to be wealthy. God has given me um, options, and I choose, okay? I choose to be wealthy. That's still not good enough. Those, those kind of people, that's not good enough. You have to be committed. So that means you have, you have to give it 100%. 100%. That means you're on every power call. Okay, try to be on every power call because you know life happens to all of us, amen. So you have to be committed 100%. You got to be tuned in, M Mr. Dalco and Mr. Ty Best. They're teaching you should be right there. Why? Because when you are plugged in, they're gonna pour into you. It's like a hose when you, when you have a hose right outside and you, you put it onto the pipe or whatever. If it's not on there right, the water is going to be wasted. You got to make sure everything is connected. Hi, William. The same thing with your cell phone. Have you ever plugged in your cell phone and you went back for your cell phone and it, didn't, it did not charge? Because the wire was not plugged in all the way. Or maybe the, 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 um, you know, the wall, the, the, the part, the, the wire wasn't in the, in, the, in the socket all the way. You got to make sure that you are plugged in and giving carrot bars 100%. You, you got to follow the map. That's why it's called the map. It's going to direct you. Okay? So he said, you got to do all that it takes to get your wealth. Okay? I'm talking about legally and morally, right? It has to be ethical. So you got to do whatever it takes. That means you got to read the books. Okay? You, you're going to have to humble yourself and be taught. Some people, you think you know everything. You don't. Especially if you look at your bank account and it's always negative. Or you always see like a little bit of money in your account. 
that means you need to be really plugged in. And even when you, when you acquire the wealth, you still need to be plugged in so that you can keep on growing and learning. Some people think they have arrived. I'm like, how are you, how are you not plugged in? And you got Mr. Ty Best, who's a successful businessman, and he's plugged in. Ignorance. We got to be committed. We got to give it 100%. Amen? He also says, you have to believe in your heart of hearts that you can create wealth. Some people don't believe. They'll, they'll tell you they believe, but they don't. And he, and he said, you got to um, believe that you deserve to be wealthy. He said, you got you to believe that you deserve it. And so I began to think about all the Bible verses when God says, wealth and riches are in your house. It's, it's supposed to be in your house. And in Jeremiah 29 11, God says, my plan is to prosper you. He said, I've given you the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8, 18, I believe. And then in Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14, all God is saying is I want you to be prosperous. So I believe and I'm committed to getting my wealth. Amen. And he says you have to have courage. You have to have courage if you're going to be wealthy. And the Bible says the righteous are as courageous as a lion. And so in carrot bars or any business that you're doing, but I'm talking about carrot bars because it makes the most sense to me. Our product is money. Why wouldn't I do it? Like it's common sense, right? And so you got to be courageous because a lot of people are going to say no, okay? You're going to go to them and your family and friends, like I said before in the other video, they're going to reject you. Are you going to say, oh no, I guess it's not for me or are you going to keep on going, okay? You, 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 your business is not, is not growing as fast, you know, as, as you would like it to grow. Are you going to give up or are you going to be courageous and keep on going? The wealthy, they, they keep on going. They're courageous. Okay. The next thing he says, you have to, if, in order, in order for you to be committed to being wealthy, you have to have knowledge. The Bible says, God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So you have to study to show yourself approved. Like you have to learn you, you, you have to go to the, um, the launch parties for cat bars, right? For wealth builders. You have to go to the power call. You have to read. Go, go to the cat bars website, your back office, and read. Look at the compensation plan. I had to read that thing back to back and record myself reading it. I was like, wow, all this is, is there? They pay you all these different ways? And it, it, it motivated me. It set me on fire, Okay. He says, you have to have ex expertise. So you got to know about this company. Who is, who is a CEO? Who is Mr. Harold Sice? Right? You got to know what's the Wealth Builders all about. Go to the website and register for your free account at the Wealth, Bu the Wealth Builders site. You got to be an expertise. You got you to you be an expert. Excuse me. You got to be ex an expert. You have to know what you're talking about. What's gold? Why is gold so valuable? Why, what's fiat? What's blockchain? What's cryptocurrency? Some people have no idea. But they, but they think they're going to be rich. When the world is changing... And it's about the blockchain and cryptocurrency, things that we didn't know about a few years ago. So we got to study. He said you got to put 100% effort. And he said you have to have a rich mind, a rich mind, okay? And so those are the things I wrote down. And then I wanted to show you something in the book of Genesis 41, I believe it is. Let me go to it. I want to show you something. So, God is establishing us, right? He's reestablishing us. So many of us, perhaps you can relate to Joseph. And I love talking about Joseph because it makes sense. He, he, he was a dreamer, right? And he shared his dream, his dreams with his, with his brothers. He also shared it with his father. And that's why Mr. Ty Best says in his book, let me show you Mr. Ty Best's book. Let me get it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get this book for you guys. So we were reading this book to the kids. So every night <clears throat> we had Bible study. Well, 
except for like certain days we have church. <clears throat> and so every night we read this with the kids. And in the chapter that we read last night, chapter three, it talks about, he said, beware of dream stealers. I'm telling you, there's a lot of, to being wealthy, you're going you're gonna to face a lot of challenges. And sometimes it's going to come from people that's closest to you. If anybody ever read the story of Joseph, it's, it's a story that would just really prick your heart. I mean, it just like cut your heart, right? He shared his dream and dreams with his family. And at the end, I mean, the same family, his brothers, tried to kill him. Hi, Letitia, tried to kill him. But they couldn't kill him because you can't kill purpose. If it's God's will for somebody to be great, you cannot kill them. What people will do, they, they can hinder you. And you can hinder yourself. And the enemy will, will hinder you as well. That's where you got to put on the whole armor of God. Amen. I'll talk to you later, Letitia. Uh, and so this book, The Dream Chaser Manifesto, was really good by Mr. Tybes. His own family, Joseph's family, tried to kill him. But they couldn't kill purpose. So what did they do? They sold him off into slavery. So the society we live in, they don't have to kill us. All, all they're going to do is tell us lies. Tell us to go to college, right? Get a job, get into debt. You know, go to college, get, get into debt, get a job, okay? That order. Take out a loan, go to college, get in debt so you can get a job. That, that's, what they, that's slavery, okay? And they, they don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur in high school. They don't teach you that. They don't teach you that. Okay? So the story of Joseph is very profound. They sold him off into slavery. His own family. His own people that he trusted. And they told his father he was dead. Right? Basically. Now, Joseph became a slave to Potiphar. And you heard me say this before. Potiphar was tied to Pharaoh. Then, you know, God was blessing Potiphar because when you're blessed by God, you're blessed. Wherever you go, you're blessed. Doesn't matter if it's, if it's prison or the palace, you're blessed no matter what. Your circumstance doesn't change that. Sometimes you're like, oh my God, you know, look at me. I'm living in a shelter. I'm living in a hotel. Doesn't matter. Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, my plan is to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope in the future. And so it doesn't matter. Joseph was still great as a slave. And then when he was accused of doing something that he didn't ever do, right? Part of his wife accusing him of doing something that he didn't do. He was thrown into the prison that was tied to the palace. And so all the bad stuff that's happening to us, God, God is like, you know what? I'm using all that bad stuff to reestablish you and to reposition you. It looks bad. I mean, they didn't scandal, they scandalized Joseph's name. Okay? It looked bad. They scandalized his name. Like, call him a rapist. Okay? And that's not, he didn't do, he didn't try to rape the, the, the woman. She's not, she was lying. Didn't matter. He went to prison. Do you understand? And it, that looked bad. And that's when you want, that's when people want to give up. My brother sold me off into slavery, right? I'm a slave. I mean, I am the descendant of Abraham. And I'm, I'm a slave. And, and, and I'm a glorified slave. My master put me in control of everything and because God's blessing is upon my life and I'm blessing my master, but I'm still a slave. And then now you're accusing me of something I didn't do? And you throw me in prison? That's when a lot of people, they're like, I'm done. 
They begin to check out. They begin to complain and kill their own selves. But Joseph didn't do that. And so you got to you got to be committed no matter what I go through. I'm going to stand on the word of God. He said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. And that's so that, right, that right there, you could stop right there and say, okay. God's plan is to prosper me no matter where I'm at. If I'm in the prison, if I'm, in, if, if I'm a slave. And so now you got to make sure that you position yourself because you know that's not, that was not God's best for Joseph. That was a setup. And so what you're going through, it's a setup. And, and, and you can look at it with God's lenses or your flesh lenses or the devil's point of view. You got to be determined to see what God is doing with all the mess that's going on in your life. And I'm talking to myself. And so when you understand the word of God, you know, okay, slave over here prisoner over here. My brother's done sold me out over here. Well, God's word says all things are working together for my good. You understand? And so it was no coincidence that Potiphar was linked to Pharaoh, right? And that the prison that Joseph went into was linked to the palace. So everything that you can think about right now that's going on in your life, that's a mess. It's tied to the palace. God says, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Amen. He's king of kings. And we are his children. We are royalty. And so after it was all said and done, all said and done, Genesis 41, I believe it is. Yeah, 41. When Pharaoh had that dream, right? Because God's going to God's going to put us in a position to solve problems. Thank God for Carabars. There are families all around the world. Now we're in 140 40 different countries and people need help. Right? And God is putting us in a position, right, where we're going to be able to help them. Okay? That's that's what this is all about. You're going to be a problem solver. Pharaoh had a dream. Nobody can nobody can help him figure it out. That's where Joseph came in. And so when you went to verse 14, it says the, um, the cupbearer, I think it was, told Pharaoh about Joseph. So in verse 14, it says, so Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was quickly brought from the dungeon and they shaved him and changed his clothes and he, they brought him before Pharaoh because God is going to use this to solve problems, right? So the same problems you have when God solved your problems, or your issues, he's going to send you out there to help other people, right? To solve their problems. So Joseph right now is going to be a problem solver. Amen. And so Pharaoh calls him up. And so in verse 15, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream. It started with a dream, right? Didn't it, the whole thing started, the Holy Spirit just showed me this. Joseph's whole situation started with a dream. Telling his brothers his dream. Telling his father and them the dream. Then you have Mr. Ty Bess. Right? The dream chaser. Now, the problem that he's going to solve involves dreaming. Sleeping dream. That was prophetic. It was a prophetic dream that God was giving to Pharaoh. Okay? It's very prophetic because that's what's going to usher in Jacob. Right? And all of his family members to go to Egypt, to go to Goshen, that further place. So it's all tied in together. Started with a dream. Okay? Back at the dream again. So it says, I had a dream and no one can interpret it. But I've heard it said of you, talk about Joseph, that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And so God is sending us. Okay, in different ways, but I'm talking about car bars right now, where we can go to people all around the world, 140 different countries, and say, Listen, there's a better way. There's a better way. You can do this. You can open up a free a free gold savings account. And we can show you how to get paid multiple ways. Just by having a team and just by paying paying yourself in gold. Just by saving gold. 
So you're not losing anything. You're taking the cash that you have and exchanging it for a greater asset called gold. And, and, and we're, we're going to be solving a lot of problems. I'm telling you, somebody sent me a message two weeks ago and said, because of you, I now have two, I now have two businesses. God is sending us to different people, different families to help them to get out of poverty, out of debt, out of lack. Okay. And so in this dream, Joseph is going to, Joseph is going to break it down to him. So Pharaoh said, in my dream, I was standing, standing on the Nile, the bank of the Nile. When out of the river, there came up seven cows, fat and sleek, and they grazed among the reeds. After them, seven other cows came up, scrawny and very ugly and lean. I had never seen such ugly cows in all the land of Egypt. Verse 20, the lean, ugly cows ate up the seven fat cows that came up first. Verse 21, but even after they ate them, no one could tell that they had done so. They looked just as ugly as before. Then I woke up. Verse 22, in my dream, I saw seven heads of grain, full, it says, full and good, growing on a single stalk. Verse 23, after them, seven other heads sprouted, withered and thin and scorched by the east wind. Verse 24, the thin heads of grain swallow up the seven good heads. I told this to the magicians, but none of them could explain it to me. Verse 25, then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. And so it says in verse 27, the seven good cows are seven years. And the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. Verse 27, the seven lean, ugly cows that came up after are the seven years. And so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. There are seven years of famine. Joseph, I'm, I'm so proud of Joseph right now. This is really good. He is interpreting the dream of the king. Oh my God. Verse 28. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Okay. Verse 29. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt. We've been telling the people, don't save paper. <clears throat> the paper is getting ready to crash. Right? We're warning them. Right? So, I love how he's, he's, God is forewarning Pharaoh through the dream and sending Joseph to make sure he accurately interpret the dream. There are bad times coming. We already know that. The Bible tells us this, right? And so it says, in verse 30, but seven years of famine will follow. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravish the land. Verse 31, the abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. Verse 32, the reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God. It's been established by God. And we talk about the word establish. Look at God. Let me look that up. Um, Genesis 41, 32. I want to I make sure that. That's the word. Let's see. Let's see. That would be very profound. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Let me check something really quickly. Wow. Speak Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God. Let, I just want to check something. Oh my God. Wow. Thank you, Father God. Yes, it's the same definition as the word established, which means to, it, it says current. Oh, my God. We just talked about the word established. The Jubilee Bible and the King James Version says it is because the thing is established by God and it will shortly bring he, he will short, shortly bring it to pass. He will quickly bring it to pass. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I had to check that. That's like 
the word, somebody please write the word establish. Oh my God. He gave me this word on Sunday. Gave it to me again today as I was talking to you. And then now we're reading. I did not remember that this word established was used in this verse. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is awesome. Wow. Okay, let's keep on going. So it says in verse 31, let me see. Uh, okay. Verse 33. And now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Okay. And so verse 34, let Pharaoh appoint commission. So he's telling Pharaoh how to fix this problem. So you got to be a problem solver. Okay. If you want to be wealthy, you got to be a problem solver. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fit of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. So he's telling them you got to save. Haven't we been telling people to, to save? Save gold. Joseph is telling Pharaoh you better save because a famine is coming. Oh my God. So don't get caught up in all the, the abundance. When the abundance is happening for the seven years, make sure you, you start saving. Because the famine is coming. We've been telling people, listen, there's something happening with the money. The, 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 the fiat. Right? Haven't we been telling them? Oh my God. And we're telling them save gold and get cryptocurrency because the world is moving to blockchain and cryptocurrency. You might have seen the internet several years ago, but it still happened. And we got to reposition ourselves. Oh my God. So he told them, you better save. Take, take a fifth, one fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. And so he said they collected the, um, the food, um, you know, from, from these good years that are coming. All right. And it says, verse 36, this food, this is what, this is what Joseph business minded. This food should be held in reserve for the country. So we're not going to touch it. We're going to put it there aside. Okay. The same thing with the gold that we're saving. Do not go sell your gold or your cryptocurrency. Hold it. This is what they've been telling us. This is all the way back in Genesis. Oh my God. And now 2019, you have Mr. Harold Sice. You have Mr. Michael Delco. You have Mr. Bass telling us to hold our coins and to hold our gold. Amen. Sorry, guys. Oh my God. This is so prophetic. Oh my goodness. I just... I'm going to be no good after this live. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to be over here praising God. He said it should be held in reserve for the country. A few months ago, I, I was talking about the word reserve. Oh, my God. What does reserve mean? Because I got to look stuff up. I'll take my time so I can learn. Get my rhema word. The logos is excellent. But when you get that rhema word. That's speaking to you and your situation. Who is so prophetic? Okay, so reserve means. Let's break this down. Let me just type it in my phone. Wow, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Reserve means. Let me see. Come on, reserve. Where you at? One second. Re, re, uh, reserve means a supply of a commodity not needed for immediate use, but available if required. It's a, res, a reservoir. <laughs> okay. It's a, it says to preserve Psalm 121. It's, it's to conserve, to retain, to save, to hold, to keep. Okay. It says, what else? When you reserve something, you refrain from using, okay? And you're saving it for future use. Now, the word, um, let me see. Preserve. Preserve means to protect, to maintain, to save, to keep, okay? 
So let's go back. This is what Joseph is telling the king, giving him wise counsel. The same thing we're doing with people, telling them, don't save paper, save gold. And so it says, um, the verse 36, the food, this food should be held in reserve. The one that he's going to collect from Egypt, it should be reserved for the country. Like we're saving for our, our children so that we can leave our bloodline wealth. And it's to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. Wow. So the solution is to save. Verse 39. Then, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. Remember, Joseph said to him, find somebody who's discerning and put them in charge of this. He didn't, he did not appoint himself. <laughs> He's so humble, right? And so Pharaoh was like, uh, 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 uh. Since God has made all this known to you, Joseph, right? This is, it says, it says, there is no one so discerning and wise as you, right? You shall be in charge of my palace. Mm. Verse 40, you shall be in charge of my palace. Now, God had, gave, God had given him leadership practice. Everything we've been going through was practice. My God, his father would send him to watch the brother's leadership. He was a leader in Potiphar's house, remember? Then he was a leader in the, in the prison. God was in all the devastation, all the obstacles, all the problems that Joseph encountered. It was preparing him for the palace. And so everything that you're going through right now, it's preparation to your big moment. I'm telling you. So, and he didn't have to put himself in that position. It, God, 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 God had already pre-planned this. He said, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a hope and a future. I'm like, Lord, this is good. He said, you shall be in charge of my palace. And all my people are to submit to your orders. The brothers didn't want to bow down to Joseph. Joseph had a dream and everything like that. And they were bowing down and all that stuff to him. And so they tried to kill him. They tried to destroy him. So that the prophecy wouldn't come to pass. But you can't kill purpose. What God has for you is for you. And if God say he going to bless you, he going to bless you. And I don't care who try to stop it. I don't care what try to come upon you. It must be fulfilled. He said, my word will not return back unto me void, but it will be accomplished. All right. And so it says, you shall be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. And so in verse 41, Genesis 41, 41. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I, hear, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. And he dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Talk about being promoted. This is a true promotion. But God is doing the same thing for you. And God is doing the same thing for me. And so when he was dressed in, in the prison, he was wearing dungeon clothes. He was, he was looking like a prisoner. Right? And sometimes, I'm telling you, like your circumstance will have you looking and feeling a certain way. That's contrary to the word of God. That was contrary to God's plan. As far as God, God day, from day one knew that Joseph was going to be great. And so all these evil circumstances try to set him back. This is a very profound story. And I can read this every day. This is very profound. He didn't look like nothing. He didn't look like much in the prison. But he kept practicing. He kept, he was interpreting dreams. He, you know, he was, he was a leader in the prison. And now this man is, I mean, transformed. 
He is transformed. He, he went up to Pharaoh and was like, I, I've been practicing my gift of, of interpreting the dreams. I, he's a prophet. And he's standing before the king. And he is the only one who can help the king. And God is putting you in positions right now, even with Carapars, where you're going to be the only one who will be able to help certain families because they're going to trust you. They're going to be able, they're going to trust you. And you're going to say, come, 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 come. Because when you pass away, you want to make sure your children have something. Come and get your free gold savings account. Come, let me, let me show you how to do it. And, and, and the company is going to pay you this and this amount. I'm going to show you the compensation plan. And you can leave this for your children. You can leave it. You can't leave your job to your children. That's why you need wise people in this, in this earth. Joseph was wise. And what we're bringing to people is called wisdom. Residual income, that's wisdom. Leverage, that's wisdom. Being a business owner, that's wisdom. And that's, that's godly. That's godly. And so the Pharaoh done dressed him in, in fine linen. In fine linen. That's where in Revelation, that, that's, what the, that's what the righteous wear. That's what those who are, uh, who are, who are um, important. That's what they wear. Fine linen. And in the signet ring. Let's, let's find out what, what's, what's this ring. I know this is a ring of power. So let, let me look it up. God says you are the head and not the tail. And, I, and I'm trying to encourage myself. For real, because before you get to the palace, you got to know that you are worthy of the palace because your father is king of kings. And so I don't care what's going on. I don't care if you're living out of a box. God said, I'm changing that. I'm reestablishing you. I'm reestablishing your situation for real. We got to have faith. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because they that come to God must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. And so if you have been acknowledging the Lord, have, if you have been diligently seeking the Lord, he said, I'm going to reward you. He is rewarding Joseph. Joseph went through hell. Have you gone through hell? Do you know what it feels like? God said, listen, I'm going to reward you. And so the signet ring, it says, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get the signet ring. It's, it's oh my God. Thank you, Father God. It, it's, it's a ring with letters usually one's initials or a design carved in it. Okay. And so if it belongs to the king, right, it will have the king's information. So it's as if Pharaoh done made Joseph kingly, right? He's going to be wearing the signet ring. So when he stamps stuff or whatever, however they use it, it shows that he has authority to do it. Jesus said, I've given you power and authority. God said in Genesis that he wants us to have dominion. And a ring is covenant. And we're in a blood covenant with God through Jesus. I want all my stuff. I want all my stuff. And so it says, he also dressed them in, in robes of fine linen. And we have on the, the robe of righteousness, the robe of salvation, the, the garment of praise. So it's like he's been going through depression and everything. But you know what? The Bible says, God said, I've given you the oil of gladness. I'm giving you the garment of praise. We're getting ready to rejoice and praise God for real. Because God is changing our situations. He is reestablishing us. For real, it says Joseph was put in charge of the whole land of Egypt, every part of it. And he had the king's ring to prove it. And he had the, 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 the righteous clothes, the, 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 the fancy clothes. Amen. And then the, the king put a ring around, I mean, a, a chain, a gold chain, gold, they go gold again, gold chain around his neck. And then in verse 43, Pharaoh had Joseph ride in a chariot. As his second in command. And the people shouted before him. Make way. Thus he was put in charge of the whole land of Egypt. And so those of us. You know what I'm saying? We were, we were the underdogs. Hmm. Get ready. Get ready for a change. Get ready for a, a shift. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. And so it says, he's walking around, second in command. Verse 44, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift hand or foot in all Egypt without your word. Powerful. Let me, let me put my music on because I got to hear my music. While I'm, while I'm talking. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. He says, I'm Pharaoh, but without your word, no one will lift a lift hand or foot in all Egypt. And in verse 45, then Pharaoh gave Joseph a, a, um, a wife. Okay? And it says, and Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt, the land of Egypt. And in verse 46, 46, Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh. And 30 is symbolic because at age 30, that's when the, the priests, the Levites, that's when they start their service. So this is so prophetic, right? I think Jesus, same thing with Jesus, I think. Okay. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout, throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, okay, it says during the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. In verse 48, Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. So that's what we're doing. We pay every week, we pay ourselves in gold, right? We're storing the wealth. We're, we're paying ourselves because we understand that um, gold attracts wealth. So we're going to save in gold. We're going to recruit. We're going to we're going to um, recruit people, right? Build our team network. They're going to save gold, right? And the company going to pay us, give us free gold, give them free gold when they save gold. So it's a blessing to save. Amen. So Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt, and he stored it in the cities. Stored it. Saved. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it, okay? And verse 49, Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was beyond measure. God has given us an abundance. God has given us overflow, Gone are the days of lack, okay, when you didn't have much because he's giving you a strategy. I'm telling you, carrot bars is a strategy. It's a system. And so for you to sit there and say, I want to be wealthy or for you to sit there and say, I choose to be wealthy, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh you gotta, you gotta be committed. You gotta be committed. And so I'm like, you have to have a strategy. What are you doing to get wealth? We have the perfect strategy. Our product is gold. We get to have a free account. We get to pay ourselves in physical gold, cryptocurrency backed by physical gold as well. We get to build a team, okay? And we all get blessed together. Called, it's called leverage. And this is what Joseph is doing all the way back in Genesis, the beginning. This is the big, listen, God said this is the beginning, okay, of greater things for us. In the name of Jesus. It was so much food that he couldn't keep any more records. It's gonna be the same with us. We're gonna have so much, so much wealth. It's going to overflow and it's not just for us. It's not just for us. It's for our, our families. It was beyond measure. God said, I will do for you exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. Beyond measure. That's, that's the kind of blessing we're having in this hour. Beyond measure. He started out in the prison. He started out as a slave. And now he's in charge of, 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 of making sure that Egypt has a great supply of food. Only God. And so it says, Verse 50, 
um, before the before the years of famine came, Joseph had two sons. Two sons. Um, the first one was Manasseh, and that name means God has caused me to forget. God, God is getting ready to cause us to forget all the hell that we went through. Okay? Because the blessings are going to be so good. We're not going to remember all the bad stuff. Okay? It says, he named it Manasseh because he said, God has made me forget all my troubles and all my father's household. God going to bless us so good. We're not going to remember the days of homelessness. We're not going to remember the days of marriage or problems. Because he's going to restore that thing so good and work it together for our good. I mean, it's going to be sweet. It's going to be so sweet. Amen? And so Destiny said, wow. And, and then the next child he named Ephraim. He said, because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. So you can write that down. God is making me fruitful in all the places where I had to suffer. Mm. For every area of your life where you suffered, I'm talking about injustice. Get ready for God to bless you. Get ready for God to bless you. Get ready for God to bless you. This whole situation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love when you just teach me. The Holy Spirit just said, Egypt is like Joseph. The whole situation with Egypt, that's, that's like Joseph's life. And because Joseph mastered the situation that he was going through, Egypt was a piece of cake. Wasn't Egypt flourishing? Joseph was flourishing first, right? They were both flourishing. Did Joseph not go through famine in his life? Uh-huh. Did Egypt go, um, go through famine? Uh-huh. Did God restore Egypt? Uh-huh. Did God restore Joseph? Uh-huh. God was, he was practicing. His life was practiced for the bigger, the bigger task was Egypt. It was Egypt. And the other big task was his family because they were doing good. Famine hit them too. Famine hit Jacob and his family. That's why they're going down to Egypt to get the food from the person that they tried to kill. And so it was all about Joseph's life. I mean, being played out. It's like, wait a minute here. So God had him practice all those years. Going through famine in the prison. Famine as a slave. But Joseph kept on being faithful to God. And when you're faithful to God, okay, you diligently seeking to God, seeking God, God says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That was all practice. Everything that you were going through, it was all practice. It was practice for, for your Pharaoh moment, your Egypt moment. It's all practice for when you, for, for your, for, for your family. I mean, he getting ready to reunite with his family. You're going to read that in the next chapter, right? He's get, this, this getting ready to be a big blow up. The one that they try to get rid of is the one that God is using to make sure everything is flowing in, in, in abundance and in prosperity. Why? You notice I kept on saying abundance. You notice I kept on saying fruitful. Let's look at Joseph's name. Let's look at Joseph's name. This is going to encourage me today. I ain't talking to nobody but myself right now, but the day but Jesus and Miss Destiny. And your name is so prophetic. For real. You already know. Our daughter is having destiny. And God said, my de your destiny is bright. Your destiny is Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay? Destiny is calling you. A great destiny. A great purpose. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's look up Joseph's name. Let's look up Joseph's name. And I know my name, Stacy, means resurrection and fruitful and abundance. So everything is going to be prophetic today. It's going to be a prophetic day. We're going to see, we're going to see things unfold, blessings pour into our lives in the name of Jesus. And that's our destiny for real. For real. I'm not playing. I'm just like, I'm here to be reestablished. What the devil meant for evil. That's what Joseph getting ready to say. What the devil meant for evil. God was like, I meant it for your good. My God. Joseph's name 
means may Jehovah add or give increase. Father God, I thank you for giving us increase. I receive my increase of wealth. I, my God, he said all that you need will be added unto you. Wow. I receive increase in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for increasing my business. I thank you, Father God, for increasing my life. Father, I thank you for increasing my business partners. Father, I thank you for increasing us, for restoring the years the palmer worms ate up. This is how the remnants do it. We understand that the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail it much. Father, I accept my increase in the name of Jesus. He said, my plan is to prosper you and not to harm you. Hallelujah. Joseph's name means may Jehovah add or give increase. Now, let's look at the word prosperity. Because he said, my, my plan is to prosper you. And we, are, we know what these words mean. But we need to really break it down. So God's plan is to prosper me. God's plan is for me to be wealthy. That's what prosperity is, wealthy. God's plan is for me to be successful. That's, it, it's for me to have profitability, affluence, riches, opulence, the good life, good fortune, ease, plenty, welfare, comfort, security, well-being. I receive it. I receive it. In the name of Jesus. It's for me to have milk and honey. I'm just reading the definition. Milk and honey. It is God's will for me to have a bed of roses. Prosperousness. Su successfulness. And guess what? Didn't I say high velocity in the beginning of, of this lesson? That God going to do it at super luminal speed? The old definition for prosperity said speed and God's speed. God is blessing us at God's speed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. At God's speed. In the name of Jesus. And now the word prosper, the verb, and I'm speaking this over us today. On the seventh day of May. It means to succeed in material terms. To be financially successful. I decree and I declare that we are financially successful. We flourish physically. We are growing strong and healthy. I decree and I declare that we are doing well, okay? We are thriving. We are flourishing in our business, our carrot bars business and all of our businesses, because many of us have different businesses. We're thriving in our businesses, flourishing in our businesses. It says blooming, blossoming, flowering. Growing vigorously. We are improving. We are succeeding. We are successful. We are progressing. We are advancing. Making headway. Do, listen, we are making progress. We are flying high. In the name of Jesus. It says to become rich. We are becoming rich. To strike gold or oil. That's what it says for prosper. I decree and I declare that we, we have gold in abundance. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we are fine and dandy. We are on easy street. <laughs> and it says good to make good speed, to make good speed. I tell you, he been showing me velocity, swift, instant. Mm -hmm. Let me finish up with Joseph and then and that's it. Thank you, Father God. So it says, he named his children prophetic names. Manasseh and Ephraim, okay? Destiny says we have gold in abundance in the name of Jesus, yes. And so it says because he planned, because they are saving, verse 53, the seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end and the seven years of famine began. So there's a famine that's coming, but because we are saving gold, building our team, okay? Because 
we are being wise. It looks foolish right now to some people. Because when, when you don't have eyes to see, you're like, you don't get it. But we're saving. Because, and we got to get our passports too. So that when we start traveling and we go anywhere, they know what gold is. Some countries don't want America, American money. America used to be on top. I'm telling you, the American money was the best. <laughs> Fiat. Nobody wants fiat. People in the future are going to want cryptocurrency and gold. Silver, gold. True assets. And gold is real money. We already know this. Revelation 3, I believe it is. Genesis 2, I think it is. Talk about the land was good. You understand? You got a plan for the future. We over here. Talk about we here. We, I can hear from God. and I'm. You can hear from God, really? Don't you see where the world is going? Do you even know what cryptocurrency is? Do you even have crypto? Do you have gold? Do you know what a blockchain is? We're studying and learning so that this way we can keep up with what, what, what's happening and we can make wise decisions. What's gonna happen when they say, oh, we have no more money, no more fiat, no more $20 bills, all gone. And that's all you holding in your house. And, and some people, they're crazy. They're putting, their, they're putting their fiat in the bank. If the bank goes down, your money going down. Your fake money. They're charging you fees for that money. In carrot bars, there's no fees. And you exchange that thing real quick. Exchange your fiat for gold. And then Mr. Harold Slice is so awesome. We get paid in euros, honey. <laughs> On our own MasterCard. Anybody want no American but We get more in your post, honey. Mm -hmm. I thought America I thought America was on top. And then we get in the Euros. It, it, it said 100 and it's, it's way more than 100. You're like coming from Jamaica, that's we 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 thought America was everything. And so, you know, you bring a a, a 20, 20 US dollar in Jamaica and when you exchange that, you, you get all this money. Now, think about euros, way better. Euro, the euro is way better, okay? So, it says the famine is here. Famine is coming. Are you prepared to handle the famine? Some people you're in famine right now. And you're doing the same thing. Mental illness is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You're in a famine right now because what you did what didn't work. They told me to go to college, get my degree, get a job. It did not work. I'm here to let you know that don't work. And I would never preach that. It, uh, that don't work. Okay? It's a, it's a trap. You, you better make sure when you're going to college... You have your you have your job in a business on the side. You understand? Like do it different. Because otherwise you're gonna end up like the rest of us. Get a job, you can't pay off your loan, can't take care of your family, or whatever. You gotta, gotta get, get your carrot bars account for free and work that thing. That's what I'm doing. Every day I'm gonna work my business for real. Because somebody's gonna register. Somebody's paying attention. And so the famine is here. In verse 54. But, I like the word but, I love that. this conjunction says it all. Because of Joseph, listen to this. It says, there was famine in all the other lands, comma. But in the whole land of Egypt, there was food. Why was there food? Because God gave Joseph that farming strategy that the Holy Spirit been talking to me about. You must have a strategy. And he gave Pharaoh a strategy, divine strategy. Pharaoh was so impressed that he was like, bam, you're second in command. Okay? You are second in command. And so everybody else is in the famine. But our household, honey, we're living good. <laughs> Why? Because we're going to go buy stuff with gold. Because everybody want no paper, they're going to burn it. Marion says, I ain't trying to stay here in the famine. Zoom everywhere to make sure I get the gold when the fiat breaks. Yes. Yes. She said, big reminders. I'm trying to, I got I to gotta go up, get my passport um, redone. I got I to gotta go get that. 
all the kids passport. Okay? This reposition, we gotta we gotta get ourselves in order. <laughs> for real. And so I thank God for our team. It's our team is growing. Okay, I have one sister, she signed up for Carabars last year. She came back last last week, got her business package, got her some one gram of gold or something like that. Then she um got I think four or five people lined up for a three-way call to, 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 to sign up for her business. Prosperity is happening. Amen. So it says there was food. There was no food everywhere else, but in the whole land of Egypt, there was food. Verse 55, when all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Right? So the, so the, so the famine finally, they could feel it, the people. But Joseph had been saving, saving the food in reserve. So the people coming, they're crying now. And so... Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. That is so profound. Verse 55, go to whom? Go to, go to Joseph and Joseph's going to tell you what to do. Verse 56, when the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened the storehouses. Malachi 3. Mm, let me go to Malachi 3. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. The storehouses. What's in your storehouse? Some people's storehouse is, storehouses is empty. Some people don't have a storehouse. With food in it. If you are a believer of the Most High God Yahweh, <laughs> and, and you and you follow with Jesus, there's no way our storehouse is supposed to be empty. The devil is a liar. The thief has been caught, and he must give us back seven times what he has stolen. And you better make sure you're not giving your stuff away to the devil. Some people, the devil don't gotta steal anything. You need to walk up in your house and take it. But you sitting right there, sipping, sipping on your coffee, sipping tea. Those days are gone. It's time to rebuild the walls of our lives, our financial lives, and get our wealth. Ain't no way we have storehouses that are empty. When we have the book of Malachi 3.10, God says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. That's what Joseph told him to do. Those people who talk about, I want to give. I want to give. That's what Joseph told him to do. That was the divine strategy. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. That there may be food in my house. Come on, Joseph. I didn't. This is my first time seeing the connection between this and Joseph. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. Didn't this just happen with Joseph? Joseph was saving so much he couldn't keep he couldn't even keep track of what he had. What he had. And so we go over here now. The people are like we're hungry. What are we gonna do, Joseph? Oh my God! What are we gonna do, Pharaoh? Pharaoh said, listen here, go to Joseph and do what he tells you to do. Verse 56, when the famine had spread over the whole country, when the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened all the storehouses. And what did he do? This is for, this is, this is for those, who, those people who always want everything for free. I'm going to check that little poverty demon at the door, bind and cast you out. What did Joseph do? Miss Destiny, Miss 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 Marion. Miss Marion says, I'm a giver and God will bless me. What you do in secret, God will bless you openly. Amen. Just by sharing the Kara Bars opportunity, that's giving, you know. Mm -hmm. Giving some giving them some 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 options, some freedom, right? That's a blessing too. Destiny, you know what I'm saying? 
when you share the information because that's a gold account they just don't look at it that way a gold a free gold savings account that it's more than seven when i began to look at the compensation plan i don't i don't even think they had the the um the the atm machine and the and, and the phone the, the 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 residual income from the from from all that and the k merchant so it's more it's a lot of different ways you get paid so when you share the information with them that's given they just don't see that marion says no you can you can only say it's going to flood for a limited time y'all know what <laughs> before god shut the door listen I'm telling you, it look crazy, right? Some, some of the stuff you do, like just like Noah. But his name means comfort. And when everybody was being devastated, he was comforted in the ark by God. And he and his family, all eight of them, new beginning. Now this part right here. What did Joseph do with the, um, the food when he opened the storehouses? He sold the grains. He sold grains in Egypt. Businessman, businessman, some people truly want you to give them everything for free. Those days are over. Those days are, those days are over like for real. You're going to buy your grain. He sold the, um, the grain to the Egyptians for the famine was severe throughout the, throughout Egypt. And all the world came to Egypt to buy grain. You didn't dare come up to Joseph and talk about, could I have some free, a free bag of grain? Those days are over. For real. Especially in my life. I'm not playing. Business minded. Why? I got to feed my kids. I, I, I got to bless my family. You know what I'm saying? And so they came not to beg because we don't beg ever. We can ask, <laughs> but don't beg for real. I told God I ain't begging. I'm not begging people for nothing. Don't ever beg. Especially people who know they should, they should be blessing you anyway. Don't beg them for nothing. Go work your business. You know what I mean? God, God will bless you. That's since I can't wait for people to see that we were right. Not to be mean, but to show we were not crazy. Amen. I know, I know we're not crazy because I look at the carrot bit and it says the value of the coins. And I was like, but it's not for us. It's for our children. And that's when it shows you're a good, you're a good parent or, or, or a godly person. Where well, you're not just thinking about yourself. We think about our children. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we think about our children and our children's children. Leaving them an inheritance. And so it says they came to Egypt. And you know what? I, 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 no lie. I'm going to do a quick live after this one. Just focusing on um, the, the, this last section. Because I got to check that poverty demon at the door. Especially in the church. They want everything, not everybody, but a lot of church people want things for free. I'm like, you're out of order. You're out of order. That's not even biblical. You know what I'm saying? Like, go somewhere with that. You have no respect for people's gifts and talents. They, they, people like that, they don't care about your family. You know? They, they're selfish little serpents. For real. They come to bite you and get what they can and leave. That's so demonic. Don't just take from people. It says they came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph. Okay? Because the famine was severe everywhere. So this tells me, you know what? The reason why people beg, because they don't see, they don't think what you have is important. Because you notice the famine was the famine was severe. 
and they were willing that's why they want they were willing to, to buy buy the, the grain when people don't think much of you they want you to give them stuff for free the moment you say okay this is the value my, my time is, is valuable you know I spent a year writing my book and I'm charging you twenty dollars for my book and and they're like no thank you that's an evil person and anybody that's like that around me, I'll cut you off. I don't care. Because you're demonic. How is somebody going to write this? Joseph spent months, right? Wasn't it seven years of blessings? The seven years of prosperity. And then seven years of famine. So he spent years collecting the grain. Going around, you know, a businessman. And you, th you think he did all that to give it away for free? No. It was to make a profit. And I used to be so afraid of selling things because, you know, there was such a stigma, like I said, in the church about that. Now I'm like, no, everybody's selling something. The movie theater selling you tickets, popcorn, soda, all kind of junk, right? And people buying it too because you can't bring your own food into the, into the movie theater. Everybody's selling. You got to pay for your cable. You got to pay for your cell phone. You got you got to get you got to pay to go to the doctors. You got to pay for the clothes you're wearing. But then when you say you're selling something, they don't want to buy it from you. Anybody like that around me, I will cut you off. You're demonic. That you. You hear me? Okay. So I'm selling my purple sweater. The same same purple sweater and the store is selling it. Selling it. The people, most people, they're going to go to the store and buy it. Even though you had the same sweater. Cut them off. That's what I... That's not right. That's not right. If you had the same quality as the store and they see you working your business to feed your family... They'd rather go pay the rich in the store. You know, rich people have their store. They have insurance. They have, they, I mean, they, they have tax right off. They get blessings. You over here, you get tax right off too, but, you know, they have a smaller business. And they won't support your business. And it'll be, it'll be, it'll be your family. It'll be your friends. It'll be your neighbors. It'll be your church family. That's not right. That's why in this season, mm-mm. I'm only hanging with Josephs. <laughs> I'm hanging with Joseph. I'm I'm hanging with the, the the widow with a little bit of oil because she sold her oil. I'm hanging with Lydia who sold who sold purple dye. I'm only hanging with people who understand that this, this it's not just about freebies. Amen. That's a poverty mentality. Those who are prosperous, prosperous, we understand that it takes time for people to do certain things. And you come in here talking about can, can you give it to me for free? We're not doing that. Amen. And so I covered this broadcast in the blood and there will be no backlash or retaliation of the devil. I said what needed to be said. I'm going to trust God that this is a seed. This, this broadcast is a seed in the ground and God's going to let my business grow. Um, he's going to let all of our businesses grow in the name of Jesus. But I'm, I'm truly coming back on here to, to focus on verse 56 to 57 and the widow with a little bit of oil. Because I think people need to understand, for real, for real, like, those days are over. When they, they have you in the churches, you know, working in the church, and they wanted to give you gas money, and they know you don't have gas money. Those days are over. You're not supposed to treat people that way. Oh, well, that, that's, your, that's your duty. You know, that's what the church does. No! They pay the, the, um, the, workers, and, the workers in the church in the Old Testament. You know, and then you come, you come here, 2019, they want you to play the piano Monday, to, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and don't give you gas money. That is demonic, and God going to judge you, okay? Because the person who's playing that, that piano has, has needs. Unless they say, no, thank you, I'm, 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 I'm okay. But a lot of people who serve in the church, you get attacked, so I know you need that gas money. Because if you're blessing people, you get attacked. You get attacked. It's, 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 it comes with the territory. It comes with it. 
So for the church to just use you and not give you something, that's out of order. And God is not pleased either. Mary said, Abraham dug a, dug a well, Isaac dug wells. Amen. Jacob tended sheep. God blesses the work of your hands. Girl, you better preach. God blesses the works of your hands and not clouds that have no water. <laughs> oh my God. God blesses the works of your hands and not clouds that have no water. Even clouds work. Girl, you better preach. Serious. And that's why I love carrot bars. Because everybody working together, leverage, right? Proverbs 31, 31. Let her, let, let the, they, they let her works. Let me read that because I, I, I God been showing me that he going to bless the, bless women. And I'm like, whoa. So I think it's Proverbs. Let me see. And then Proverbs 31. See, Mary, you pull this one out. Proverbs 31, 31, it says, talk about the, the, the wife. It says, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. At the gate, that's where the leaders met. That's where court, they had courts, you know, court sessions, and that's where um, the business transactions happen. And we, we see the Proverbs, I got to read about her too. Proverbs 31 woman, she was a, a businesswoman, okay? And so I decree and declare that God is going to cause people to honor honor us. Those of us who are in order, right? Honor, honor us for all the works of our hands, the things that we've done. And our works are going to bring us praise at the city gate. I'm talking about where it matters. We're going to, listen, they're going to be talking about us at the gates, God's going to put our names on the lips of great people. Your gifts are going to make room for you and bring you before great people. Okay? That's why we got to make sure that we prepare. God was preparing Joseph all that time. Because Egypt was going to become like how his life was. Just out of order. Right? Famine. <laughs> First was blessed, then famine. You understand? And so, get in position. Because God's going to cause great men and women to bless you. They're going to see the works of your hands. Anoint your hands. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Anoint your hands. We don't have idle, idle hands. Mm -mm. These hands are blessed. We bless our hands. And so it says, honor her. Honor. Honor. Honor her. For all that her her hands have done, all of all of it, not just a little bit, and let her works with an S. Let her works bring her praise. Those days of sorrow, they're over. They're over. Listen, oil of gladness. Let the works. Let her, it says, let her works, not nobody else's, let her works bring her praise. It's not going to bring us, bring, it's not going to bring us sorrow anymore. And sometimes you did, you've done stuff and it's just like, what? You don't see the fruit of your lips. God said, listen, your, the, the works of your hands getting ready to praise you at the city gate. And I love how it says specifically at the city gate. They're going to know your name in the name of Jesus. And when they call your name, I, I love how. Joseph, when he was interpreting the dream, he gave God the glory. He said, God has already established this. So when they call our name and they say destiny, because destiny is calling. When they say Marion, we're going to say God. We're going to lead them back to the Father. Amen? And so that's it. That's all I had to say. And God is good. God is good. Marion, so your name is? It says your name means it's it's like Mary, and we, we only pick the good the good definition. It's like Mary. It comes from the name Mary, right? And we don't want any of the other stuff they talk about. It says wish for child or Lady of the Sea, and we've been talking about the our fleet, which means quickness, and but also a group of ship or group of um 
cars, group of planes. And we were saying that our fleet of blessings, they're coming in. Amen. Last week, last week I was reading about the boat called Amen that rescued those two kids. The boat, listen, didn't we say the wave of blessing was coming in? I, we would talk about this for like months. The wave of blessing is coming in. Our fleet is coming. Yes. And so the kids were stranded at sea in the water. They go to water again. Right? And it says that they prayed. And yes, she said, um, he hears us and he has not forgotten us. Amen. Amen. He said he would not, not forget us. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? He said, no, never. I would never forget you. They prayed. And the boat with the name Amen written on it, the boat called Amen, which means so be it, showed up to rescue them. Amen. And so God, the blessings are coming. The wave is washing it up. I was on I was on a streetcar shore drive. The blessings are coming up to, coming up to the shore. And I'm make sure I'm there with my baskets. Okay? Because you're gonna get your blessing. Okay? And it's not gonna be a little bit. It's gonna be a lot. <laughs> right? Because God, God saw all that we've been doing. Amen. And um Destiny says God is just so awesome. He saved those children. Look at God. Yes. I'm like, they prayed and God answered. And look, look at the irony that the boat is called Amen. I, I just, I can't. Like, God is amazing. Marion says, yours truly, I told you. I told you. You got to leave my desk just crying. Girl. I just want everybody to know, all three of us, because... Three is symbolic of resurrection, completion, and perfection. And there's three of us here. And we're touching and agreeing, right? For God to bring us to prosperity. Okay? God is just, wow. God is going to change our situation. And he said, we saw God's speed. We saw God's speed. We saw speed, right? Swiftly. He showed me swiftly, instant, next to each other. There was a building called Instant. And next to it was a truck. Big truck said swiftly. And so, when I tell you that I need God to move, like, right now, I cannot doubt. I have to have faith to believe. Faith to believe. Amen? All things are possible when you believe. Speedily, yes, he's doing it quickly. And so I'm like, super luminal speed, Father God, do it. Do it. I passed by a building called Danielle, or Daniel, the, the male, the male version. And all, all, all of a sudden, a young lady named Danielle inboxed me. Then I passed down, I passed down the street, down Danielle. In one, one part of town. Another part of town, I passed down a street called Daniel Smith. And next to Daniel Smith was Hezekiah. I said, Father God. I said, Father God. And so for the next prayer rally, we're going to focus on the courts of heaven. Because Daniel means God is my judge. God is my judge. And so God is a God of legalities. And there are some things that happened to us that were definitely illegal. And so God has given us justice. Justice. Amen. And like Hezekiah, he gave Hezekiah 15 more years. And we know Hezekiah, I think his name is God is my strength. Let me see. Hezekiah. Destiny says, God is moving swiftly, suddenly, and speedily. I need God to move for me. Manifest now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, me too, girl. I touch and agree with you. I touch and agree with you. Oh, my God. That God, us three, watch. God going to show us. And yes, Destiny, justice, payback. I'm telling you, um, Isaiah 35 says he's coming with recompense. Us three, when it happens. 
we're gonna we're gonna come back and testify okay so hezekiah got a miracle remember he got a miracle he was getting ready to die and when he prayed turned his face to the wall god says okay isaiah go back to him when when isaiah went back he said god said i'm gonna give you 15 more years and they put a, a, a fig paste they got the figs and they put it on they put it on um the, the 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 boil or whatever he had and then god gave him a miracle let the sun backed up like what I think it was step, 10 steps, something like that, okay? God gonna do a miracle for us, okay? So Hezekiah means God is my strength. I also passed down the street Gabriel, which has the same definition. Gabriel was the one that showed up to um, speak to Daniel, okay? Gabriel was the one that also showed up to speak to Mary, okay? And it also means God is my strength. And God is giving us joy. Right? By, by giving us justice, we're going to get some joy. We're going to be like, oh my God. And that joy is going to give us the strength. I'm telling you. And I just prophesy it right now in the name of Jesus. And so Daniel, you know, God is so awesome that God sent angels to shut up the mouth of the lions. So every lion that was coming to try to devour us and our business, our marriage, whatever, God's that seal it. Listen. God's going to seal up the mouth of the lions. Amen. Then he showed me a street called Lion, a place called Leon, a street called Leon, and we shop from Food Lion. I said, then he showed me a, a, a name. I think it's Araya. Araya means lion. And so when the Holy Spirit is speaking and he said, the lion of the tribe of Judah is coming to rescue us. Okay. Revelation 19. And I think the name was Araya. Let me see if I can put up. And I think it means. Let me see. What is it? I think it's spelled. But anyways, it means lion. So you kept on giving me references to the lion. And I'm like, Father God, I need you to be a lion right now. <laughs> Marion says, I'm not playing when I when I pray prophetic. Prophetic anointing over my husband from traits of Jehu, Moses, David, Daniel, Isaiah, Joseph, and Abraham, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Amen. Prophetic anointing over um, our husbands. I receive that in the name of Jesus. That, listen, that's spirit, that spirit of Jehu. Oh, my God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. When Jehu showed up. Jezebel, Jezebel had to die. And so we pray for the anointing of Jehu to be released in the name of Jesus. Moses, that leadership anointing. We speak it over us and our husbands, our children in the name of Jesus. And also Moses was a prophet and he was so humble. So humble. Amen. And he had, he had such great faith and we released that over us. David, you already know about David. Worshipper, leader. Amen. Daniel, just in brilliant prophet. Can interpret the dreams and he just Daniel was on a different level, okay? In the name of Jesus. Then you had um Isaiah. Yes, Isaiah was one of the, the crazy prophet, walk around naked. And his prophetic words about the Messiah was on point. Okay? Joseph, you already know Joseph, leadership, prophet, Abraham, you already know. Oh my god. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had, they had faith like Abraham. They were like, listen, if God don't help us, we don't keep it not bowing down to you. They had that faith to believe God no matter what, right? That, that's, that, that's just amazing. That's the anointing that we want. Amen? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Anything else? I think that's it. I think that's it. Destiny said, this word was definitely for the three of us. I needed this for real. Yes. Yes. And we're going to, it's like, he's, God said out of the mouth of three, two or three witnesses. Think about courts. Everything is about courts this week. Because we're going to rally together next week on Monday. And so out of the mouth of three, two or three witnesses, that's when um, God, it, you're supposed to listen. Let's get that verse. So there's three of us. And testimony in court. You need testimony. So let's get that. 
I was reading that yesterday, I believe it was, I was finish, finishing up my book on Courts of Heaven and somebody from Africa wanted a copy of it. So I, I went and just, you know, add some new stuff to it and everything. Second Corinthians 13 verse one, it says every matter, okay, every case, okay, must be established. Look at that word again. Oh my God, oh my God, establish. Oh my God. It says, for every matter, every case, okay, it must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and us three. Oh my God. Amen. And so, we, we listen, it says every matter must be established by two or three women. So it's already been established. God is like, boom, y'all got it. Remember, remember the word established. We just looked it up. Oh my God. And he showed me this word on Sunday, the word established. And I wrote it down. Pay attention to the word established. God getting ready to do something. It's going to be big, y'all. The word established comes from, I know I wrote it down. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Right here. God is establishing me. And and, and I wrote down the definition. It says achieve permanent acceptance or recognition for set up an organization system or set of rules it says on a firm or permanent basis establishing means to start it means to set up to begin to get going to form to to um, to, to to be founded um to initiate to create to bring into being to lay the foundations to plant to construct and it comes from the word Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim. Ah! Okay. Jehoiakim. J H O I A C H I N. I did a teaching on that on Sunday on my pod dean. His name means Yahweh establishes. And when you read his story, he was imprisoned and everything. And at the end of it all, um, God took him out of prison and the, the king brought him to the palace. And so God says, I am reestablishing you guys. Oh my goodness. Those of us who've been in the prison, like, like Joseph, he was in prison. Joachim was also in prison. Oh my God, his family, they were all, because they sinned against God, right? So God calls them to be in, um, in, 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 in um, bondage. But God showed me the word. Oh my God. Joachim. Oh my God. It means Yahweh establishes and establish. God said, I'm getting ready whoo, to bless you so good. Oh, all the prayers that we've been praying are getting ready to be established. It means to begin. We're going to see it. We're going to see them like the manifestation. It means to set up, to start. You're going to start seeing the breakthroughs. Oh, my God. Oh, it says to bring into being. To bring into be I can't. I'm done. You get it? That's what God is saying. Establish. Okay? And so, I'm on fire. I'm telling you, I'm like this. Oh, my God. You guys be blessed. I'm going to get ready for the power call. I'm going to come back on because I want to focus on selling. Okay? Selling. Like how Joseph sold it. The, um, the grain. The widow with the oil. And Lydia sold purple dye. Which was very rare, and only the um, the upper class and the kings in them wore purple, right? So, because it was hard to get it from the the um, I think it was the sea creatures they got it from some kind of sea creature. Oh my God! Destin said, "I'm at work trying not to scream." That word established and messed me up. <laughs> Two weeks ago, my bishop told me that God was about to bless me. That He knows. The good I've been, he says, he knows the good I've, I'm fine, even things I've forgotten about confirmation. Do it, Lord. Amen. 
He knows the good, even even the things I've forgotten about. Yes, God's gonna bring it back because God God don't God does not forget. God doesn't. Yes, rare like gold. The purple was rare. That's why you know gold is valuable because you can't just go and print it off like I didn't do with the, the money. And 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 in the book, no, in my research, they were saying that wealth, you know, gold attracts wealth. And, and, and fiat attracts problems. Why? Because these wicked people, they keep on printing more of it and causing inflation, right? To, to, to be worse. Okay? And so, um, yes, yes, yes. God has seen the good you've done. And you've done a lot of good stuff. And it, it, it's, it's like seed in the ground, you know? And so that's why it was like, don't save paper because the wicked... The rock child, all of them, you know what I'm saying? They're just printing the money, the fake money, and giving to the people, tricking us. So it's so much research out there. And and so the paper currency attracts not so good things. So put the gold in your pocketbook. And I said, okay, that makes sense to me. God said the gold is good. He said, I, I, I counsel you to get gold from me anyway. So there you go. God bless you guys. Thank you for talking to me. You're my proof. That God's getting ready to establish some stuff. Watch. Watch God do it. God bless you guys.